Warning, before the video begins, this is meant to be an opinion piece on several games that I do in fact like and think are very good. The following is meant to be a funny, lighthearted look into my personal experience with these games and the horror genre in general, and is not meant to be considered a legitimate review from a real games journalist who knows what the hell they're talking about. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. Oh, hey folks, my name is Axel, and uh, it would appear I've died. You know, at the beginning I kind of figured that I might make it, but then the bus hit me for a fourth time, and then, I mean, I guess it was fate after that. Uh, you know, it's kind of inconvenient, but, I mean, it's not that big a deal. You know, I could get used to this. On the plus side, though, this does mean that I have a lot more free time on my hands, so maybe I should chop off on my to-do list, right? It's not like too early for holiday content, right? Happy Halloween 2022, folks. So last year I had an idea to do a sort of Halloween video where I take a critical look at some of my personal favorite horror games and give my general thoughts on them, but as you might have guessed by now, I'm a lazy f hard and can't actually work on shit to save my f***ing life. So I ended up not having enough time slash not having the patience to make a Halloween video for 2021, or really any holiday themed content in general. So in order to ensure that I actually get it done this year, I've decided to do a Halloween special a little bit early. And considering the fact that I'm taking a look at three games with the same level of detail that I would a normal video, I will personally be shocked if this video is even out by October anyway. Horror games. Why do people like this kind of game? It's weird, right? Like, you wouldn't think that enlisting such a strongly negative emotion like fear would be something people would sought after. But people do it because it's more complicated than that. There are a lot of very important things to consider when creating a popular piece of media, be it a novel, a movie, a show, or even a video game. Stuff like length, impact, art style, brand recognition, resources, message, entertainment value, audience interaction, writing plot, narrative direction, the audience you cater to, pacing and key points, grip, editing, and new drafts, setting, and most importantly of all, copyright. I could go on for a while, but you get the point. It's not a simple process by any means. One that I feel is especially important is impact and feel. Simply put, is your content engaging to view? Does it elicit emotions in the viewer that makes them want to come back for more? See, there's a difference between genuine fear and scary, and, and that may not make sense, but let me explain. Fear is the primal emotion that comes with the sense that you are in danger. Where on the other hand, scary is more so a watered down version of fear, I feel like. I think what scares people the most in media is anticipation and payoff. There's possibly nothing more scary than walking towards a strange noise in a supposedly empty building down a dark hallway in the middle of the night. If you did that in real life and something jumped out from behind a door with gnarled teeth and blood dripping out the mouth, you'd piss your pants and need seven to eight months of intensive therapy and you'd be pissing your pants in every session. But that kind of thing happens in a game or a movie and yeah, it's, it's scary. You jump and you feel weird for a second, but it's not therapy inducing. Like, you'll get over it. Why is that? Why isn't it such a big deal? Well, it's because it's not really happening to you. It's happening to the protagonist. Having a horrific event happen on a screen allows us to detach ourselves from what's going on. We ourselves don't feel as though we're in immediate danger, but the way our brains are wired still allows us to get that sense of buildup that the real-life counterpart would insist, just on a much smaller scale. Sure, you yourself are not going to have an actual monster jump out at you, but at the same time, something still does jump out at you and you don't expect it. It's the pure emotion that it brings out, the unbridled sense of adrenaline. It's that heavy feeling in your chest after a big jump scare. 
you're suddenly wide awake and aware. Your heart is beating fast, and perhaps your hands are a tad bit tingling. It's a similar ish thing with why people ride roller coasters. The sense of anxiety that you feel going up, the small sense of panic at the top, and the three seconds of heavy fear that comes as you fall, and the rush of adrenaline as you fly around at a thousand miles an hour, and the oh thank god feeling when it's over. It's all just wanting to feel something. It gives us the feeling of being in these scenarios without actually being in these scenarios. And I'm sure you probably already know what my favorite type of the bunch is, right? Video games add one extra layer to that adrenaline. It takes you one step closer to the real thing, and it's f awesome. You may not be the one running from the monster, but you are controlling them. That gives you a strong connection to the character, and thus a strong connection to their thought process and what the hell is going through their heads. However, it's interesting because I feel like what makes a good normal game doesn't necessarily make a good horror game. Horror games are an interesting case. If you play a game and the controls are weird, or if it's kind of boring, or if the gameplay just isn't really engaging, then yeah, it's a bad game. Uh, objectively. But I've seen and played some horror games that are just glorified hallway simulators, but they're pretty good overall. Of course, it's not as simple as turning the lights down and giving everything teeth. For example, I recently played Happy Game and loved every second of it. The imageries and visuals are outstanding. It's a wonderfully delicious piece of environmental storytelling. But I would be lying if I said the game itself didn't get old. It's a point-and-click style game, which it, in and of itself isn't bad, but after a while, the style of puzzles they use in this game specifically became kind of obvious, and I was able to solve most of them with relative ease by just moving the mouse around in the same way I always have. It's not hard or even really engaging, but I'm more than willing to give the game a pass for it because it just charmed me so much. The presentation is just so good. That's kind of what I mean. It's not even really exclusive to horror, like story-based games and visual novels and technical showcases. You can get away with a lot of really iffy gameplay elements if you hold true to certain genres. Because you don't really play these games for the gameplay, you, it, it's meant to be an experience. Horror games are not designed with gameplay in mind, they are designed to scare you. But it's not mutually exclusive. You can have terrific gameplay while still eliciting fear, and those games happen to be my absolute favorites of the horror genre, and it's just some of the stuff that I wanted to talk to you about today.